Hey guys, Will Terry here with another video. Um, today I'm going to answer the question, how much money can you make illustrating children's books? And before I get going on that, I just want to point out that you can always visit me on my blog. i got a link right down here, willterry.blogspot.com. Also, just wanted to, to let you know that we just finished up um, a webinar called 10-Step Digital Painting. We had 400 people attend. I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Um, and you can check that out at svslearn.com. That's svslearn, L-E-A-R-N.com. And one other little quick thing. Um, my, I'm getting a lot of videos now, and, I'm, and I have a lot of great comments. I want you to know that I read each and every comment on every single video. I read each comment on my blog, and I don't always get a chance to respond to them, so don't feel like you're being ignored. I really appreciate every single comment that I get. Okay, so this uh, question was a great question posed to me from Brendan in Australia, and I'm just going to read his letter really quick. He says, I'm a graphic designer from Sydney, Australia, and looking to get into illustrating children's picture books on the side. Hopefully down the, down the track, I'll do it full time. Just curious, how much money could you make? I heard about $10,000 per, per book and it takes two to three months to illustrate a book if this was your full-time job and you had guaranteed work lined up that's four books a year equals $40,000. Um, not much money at all. I um, and then, then he goes on to say, um, let's see, I know you shouldn't make choices based on money and stuff like that and do it for the love of it, but got to feed the family. So then he says, just some further information currently on a $73,000 a year as a graphic designer um, and but there's no way I could support my family on $40,000 a year it costs a lot more down in Australia Australia is very expensive yes we get paid more but it cost of living is high $73,000 a year doesn't really cut it hence my looking for extra income Brendan okay so I just want you to know Brendan and everybody else that I don't actually physically personally know anybody who is supporting themselves. I know a lot of illustrators. Um, I know of a lot of, and actually I shouldn't say that. I do know a few personally, um, but I don't know many illustrators that support themselves and their family on children's books alone. And the ones that do usually have a spouse that's working as well. So I know a, a, a female illustrator who does great, but her husband works. I know um, another guy who does who's constantly busy doing children's books but his wife teaches school and has a good job teaching school um, and then uh, when I think about it I know another guy whose wife works and anyway um, having said that I do know a few people um, I do know a husband and wife team who actually do um, support themselves um, doing children's books alone but I'm going to talk about them later in just a second I don't want to get ahead of myself um, let me just tell you how I support myself um, a little bit because my wife does not work um, but uh, I certainly do not live off of my children's books alone especially the the advances so I'll just tell you about where my where my income comes from um, I get other freelance illustration work that are in other markets some of them are in um, textbook and educational markets sometimes sometimes in editorial and sometimes in advertising um, I do elementary school visits from time to time. Those can pay pretty well for the time that you put in. Um, I speak at conferences and, and at colleges um, from time to time. That adds to my yearly income. I teach at UVU. I teach online with my own SVS, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Um, I get money from my ebook sales and my story apps. I get even money from YouTube, from my YouTube partner, AdSense. Um, and I get um, video sales for my uh, other video company, and I get royalties for my children's books, which you know that obviously that's that's something that you hope to get, uh, and investments, and in, and so my income is coming from a lot of different uh, spokes. So I think you know, I think um, um, Go um, Seth Godin talks about a spokes of the wheel. Um, you should try to have multiple little streams of income coming in. So that's what rounds out my year and really makes things work um, on this end. So um, I could definitely not do it on children's book advances alone because you're right I'd be getting thirty or forty thousand dollars a year and that's not enough. Last year I did three children's books um, and so my advances are a little higher than that but um, 
but not a whole lot. And so a, a typical children's book advance, just so you know, um, for, for they can range anywhere. And uh, I did a video a while back, if you're interested in pricing, I think it was called um, Pricing Your Illustration for Children's Books and, and Freelance Illustration or something like that. Um, and in there, I think I talked about it a little bit, that a children's book, I've heard of advances as low as, well, I've even done one, but my senior project in at at uh, school out of college was I got a thousand dollar advance so um, I that's about the lowest I've heard for a full picture book a thousand dollars and uh, the sky is pretty much the limit on advances but for a beginner the most I've ever heard was twelve to fifteen thousand for for a beginner so that's on the high end but yeah ten thousand dollars is pretty much it probably a pretty good average um, for a mid to large size publisher but everything down below that is possible with smaller publishers. Um, and then the more you've been doing it, I've had advances that have been over $20,000. So um, that, that's a possibility too when, you, when you've been doing it a little bit longer. Um, okay, so, but the dream, I think what keeps most people in children's books, um, well, that's, that's not really true. A lot of people are supplementing their, their total family income by, and doing just fine doing little readers and little little books here and they really aren't doing the kind of books where they're really trying to or, or really dreaming of winning awards or stuff but they're just making a decent income and happy to do that. I think for a lot of people though what their hope is is to either get on the New York Times bestseller list or win a major award such as the Caldecott. So I thought we would do a little bit of um, award math or um, New York Times bestseller math. I have a friend who actually, um, and this is what I was talking about before, um, who they did a, he and his wife did a picture book and it sold really well. It just happened to be the right thing at the right time and it did really well. And then they did sequels. And then that first book ended up selling somewhere around 800,000 copies. If you do the math, if you're, if, if, the, if a book sells for, let's say, $15 and you're the author and illustrator, in this case they were, and you get 10%, you're going to get $1.50 for every book. So if you sell 100,000 books, what's 100,000 times $1.50? Well, it's more than $100,000. It's $150,000. They sold 800,000, so you can do the math on that. That's a lot of money, and that's one reason why I think, I think it keeps the dream alive. I think, it's, I think the same reason why people do children's books or want to go into children's books and try to win awards either state awards or there's there's over 200 awards that you can win um, that are that are large size decent size awards um, in the in the US and 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 overseas um, but I think that it's a lot like the acting world I think people want to become actors because they know that if they hit on the right project they could stand to do really well they, I'm sure they love acting as well so they really get into it for that reason um, but anyway, um, so I think that's the same reason why people really want to get into children's books. They have that dream. They want to keep it alive. Um, a Caldecott is the big medal for children's book illustration. And most people really, really, really have dreams of winning that. I've had dreams of winning that before other people have as well. But uh, just doing some math on the Caldecott Award, um, there are... And the, the Caldecott is is a domestic. It's a it's a U.S. domestic award. Uh, unfortunately, I've I've there have been years where I've thought, boy, there's some some really nice books and really nice uh, illustrations that that um, could have won, but the books were produced in in a country outside the U.S. and they were ineligible. Um, and I thought they probably would have had a really good chance of winning. So it's kind of kind of interesting that way that it's only for U.S. Um, residents, um, but it is an it's an award supposed to, supposed to be just given for the illustrations and not for the text. The Newberry is kind of the the counterpart to that that's given to the author, but the Caldecott is awarded to the illustrator. Um, it's an interesting note on that is that it's actually um, I've never seen an award given to a, a really dumb or, or a book that was just really poorly written. So. I really think that the, uh, the the committee members are definitely influenced by the content and the writing style of the author, but they're really supposed to just be looking at the illustrations. Um, 
But let's do some Calicot math. So I have uh, been told, uh, I used to go to ALA conferences. I haven't been in a couple of years. I'll probably go to some more. And those are librarian conferences. There's about 20,000 librarians around the country in the U.S. that will actually attend this conference that floats from, from five different cities all around the U.S. And it's in a different city every year. And they do a midwinter and they do a, a summer conference. And they have 20,000 librarians there that are represented at, at libraries all over um, the U.S. But interestingly enough, a lot of a lot of libraries are not represented by those um, those uh, by a representative at those. There are about 200,000 libraries in the U.S. alone. So when when someone wins the Caldecott, or each year when they award that Caldecott, those librarians know that their um, that their patrons are going to want to um, um, use that book. Their patrons are going to want to uh, check that book out. So they'll buy, I've heard some will buy 10 copies of the Calicot, but, but let's say that they only buy like five copies, okay? Five copies times 200,000, that's a million books. So if you're the illustrator and you're getting 75 cents a book or 50 cents a book or whatever, that's a lot of money. I've also been told that um, with some of my books before, some of my more popular books, I've had librarians tell me that they'll buy anywhere from three to five copies of my book a year just because of damage. So just because those libra librarians buy the book one year doesn't mean that they can't continually buy that. And when you're talking about a metal like the Caldecott, that book will stay in print for the rest of that illustrator's life. And it will be a book that's in demand to be used from... Uh, patrons of libraries. So even though the books are getting damaged, um, and, and and the librarians can't can't uh, check them out anymore, they they're going to buy new ones every single year. Um, so that means royalty checks are going to come every single year to that illustrator and to the author. Now, and I'm only talking about books that are going to be bought and and purchased by libraries. What about individuals? And there are a lot of families. There are a lot of individuals. There are a lot of teachers. Um, there are a lot of people who will collect Caldecott winners um, or other medal winners. Um, so I've heard of, um, there's a state award in Arizona. I had a friend who won the Governor's Choice Award in Arizona. Um, and I don't know if they're still doing this, but the governor of Arizona would give, they would pick a children's book every year and give one copy of that children's book to every fifth grader. Um, how many fifth graders do you think live in the state of Arizona? Quite a few. So the, the state was actually buying quite a few books. So if you won the Arizona State Award, then your book went out to however many um, fifth graders there were that year. And again, there's like there's like uh, somewhere around 200 awards that you could win um, domestically here in the U.S. So to answer your question, Brendan, in a long-winded kind of way, it really is the only thing that's going to keep you in children's books is the dream of, of really going beyond the advance. That's what publishers are hoping for. They're hoping that, that your book goes beyond. They, they're they realists. They know that most books will not do what they call earn out, which means um, that they earn enough money to actually pay off the advance and start paying the illustrator and the author royalties. Um, most won't. And there's a, there's a seven or nine to one ratio at publishers that meaning that seven to nine books do not earn out and, and get remaindered and go out of print um, and that's just this the simple reality of it so if you're an illustrator and you take those odds into consideration chances are that you'll do quite a few books that won't earn out and that you won't get royalties on uh, right now I probably have maybe five or seven books that are earning royalties right now um, I have some some books that have some really good chance of earning royalties with some some authors that do a lot of school visits during the year, so they're selling a lot of books. There's really a pretty good luck factor that comes into play when you're dealing with uh, children's books. Uh, publishers are publishing so many books that even they don't know which books are going to do well and which which aren't. So they're hedging their bets by publishing a nine to one ratio. They don't trust their own instincts. So they trust them to a point, but they realize they can't time, they can't time the market. They can't predict what, what's going to take off. Um, they have to publish good books and, and make their best guesses and work with the best people. 
um, and try to buy the best stories and let the let the market decide what they like. So um, my advice basically is do it as a dream, do it as do it on the side. Try you're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna to make enough money to be able to afford to do this, but it's really no different than than any other business. Um, if you want to open a restaurant, you have to be able to find the money, find the time, find the the way to afford to actually go through the process of of starting the space, um, uh, designing the space, uh, putting, getting all the uh, the recipes ready. I mean, just all the stuff. I don't. I've never opened a restaurant, but just I'm sure the list is huge. And while you're doing all that, you're probably not getting paid unless you you keep your own your job and you're doing it on the side. So. Um, it's it's just like starting anything else. You're going to have to be able to afford to do it and hope that your the products that you're working on are good enough that they can win awards. I don't I don't think that I think there's so many books published during a year that I think trying to win the Caldecott is kind of a fool's errand. Um, I think the better money is on trying to do the best book that you can do, the book that will make you the happiest, and then if you do that. Then I think you will find that um, that you'll have a better chance of winning the award, and so that's um, all that I wanted to say about that. Thank you.